Okay, this is data recovery case 760421. This is a one terabyte Toshiba hard drive. And the reason why I'm highlighting this is it may not be recoverable. And I know that's kind of a weird one to do. I know a lot of people will think, well, surely you can only video the ones that are recoverable because it makes us look brilliant. Uh, but actually, I'd rather show you kind of some of the circumstances that we run into with some cases and, you know, real life situations like this. This particular drive here, we've already gone through and done two head swaps on. Uh, drive down here is the parts drive that the customer actually included with it. And we already had a parts drive on hand, so we've gone through the parts drive that we had and the one that the customer sent along. The one the customer sent was not an exact match, but it was a match enough that it should have worked. And, and it still did to some extent. The problem that we're having with this drive is we go through and we swap the heads. The drive will calibrate, it'll become ready, and it will start to image. We've actually generated a bitmap off of this to where we can see that there's probably roughly 70 gigabytes of data on there. There's not a whole lot. And then what will happen is, is the drive will slow down more and more and more, and then it gets to the point where it's just not accessible anymore. It'll start clicking and just won't calibrate any further. Generally what we see is when we have a drive that has failed with a head, with a head failure and we swap the heads out and we put another set of heads in and they work either in a severely degraded state or they work for a very short time and fail again, we generally will see that that is an issue where the platter itself has become scored due to that initial head failure that occurred and then the replacement heads are floating so close to the platter surface that they also become damaged um, by those imperfections in the platter. So we are going to go through and make a couple more attempts on this. I've got two parts drives right here that have been shipped to us. One of them the customer shipped and then another one that we ordered. So that will be four sets of heads that have been put into this drive here uh, with the hope that we can get something usable off of it. So anyway, that is where we are going to begin. We're going to go ahead and take this into uh, the clean room area and start to disassemble it again and put uh, the first set of heads that we have. I think the parts drive that we ordered may be a little, it's I think a pretty much a spot on match. So we may end up using that one first. Unless for some reason the one the customer sent to us is also a spot on match and has a closer manufacturing date. So we'll go ahead and open those up and uh, take a look at them and then go from there. Okay, we've gone ahead and unboxed the parts drives for this case on um, this one terabyte Toshiba drive. This is the parts drive that we ordered uh, that came in. This is the extra one that the customer sent in. Uh, we're going to go through and use the one that we ordered first, mainly because it is a spot on match with the model number uh, up here. And there is just one slight variation between the two model numbers, and that is the H, that HDKGB13H, is actually an A on the uh, the other parts drive that we have. We know that that drive is compatible with this one though because we've already used those heads uh, out of the similar drive here that the customer sent. Basically, he's bought two parts drives it looks like that were the same model number with just that one deviation. So we've used the heads out of here and those are the heads that are actually in this drive still right now uh, that had the issue where they did the same thing as the other parts drive we did and just worked for a little while, slowed down, slowed down uh, and then eventually just failed. So so we do have that as, a, as another backup. So anyway we are going to take these two drives here, the parts drive that we ordered, that's the exact match, and the customer's drive. And we are going to go through and see if we can get any better results this time. Hopefully we can. If nothing else, maybe we can get it to where it images enough to where we can pull off the files that the customer is needing. 
So we're probably going to go through and just use our deep spar imager once we get to imaging. So it's going to be a little bit different because if I'm not mistaken, I believe I believe this drive is formatted for Mac. Uh, so anyway, we will go through and um, just image as much as we can with this set of heads. Hopefully we can get the majority of what the customer needs off of it and just get some good results out of this. If not, you're going to kind of see what we get up against sometimes with some of these cases that take a little bit of time, that take a lot of parts and a lot of patience and sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. So we will continue on and start putting the uh, parts drive heads in to the customer's drive. Okay, and now we have K760421 attached to our Deep Spar Imager. Um, I have it set up as the source drive here, cloning it over to um, this new 4 terabyte drive there. I will generally bounce around between uh, a Deep Spar Imager and our PC3000, and a lot of times it's just a matter of preference. Uh, some data recovery companies and technicians prefer to use PC3000 for everything and we've highlighted that in a couple videos uh, utilizing that utility and it's very very good sometimes though I've found that when I have drives that have heads that are iffy or platters that might be damaged for whatever reason the deep spar imager seems to be the better choice for those situations at least in my opinion it tends to put on a it tends to put the drive under a little bit less of a load it seems like because I have had issues where I've used PC 3000 started to image a drive that's very degraded and it just does not function as smoothly as it does in deep spar so we have it connected here you can see on the display that's our destination drive. I am going to go ahead and apply power to this drive and hopefully this last head swap will have worked.
It's got power to it. You can see that it's busy. Still busy. And this is what it did before. It took it a while before it actually became ready. I don't really hear the drive making any weird noises though. I'm going to put the camera down as low as I can. just barely hear it trying to read. And it's still showing busy. What I may do is pause the video here and let it sit for a little while. Sometimes letting them sit, they'll eventually become ready. So I'm going to go ahead and pause right now and come back and hopefully everything is ready and we can start see if we can pull that off of this drive again okay it did take a little while but uh, the drive did finally calibrate became ready uh, refresh the screen it still took a while to display but it eventually did and ID'd itself properly um, so now we will go through we have it connected here again it's not sounding unusual but this is the same situation we've been running into with this drive. Um, it's just so slow to do anything. And I'm going to go through and put some of the initial parameters that we have in place. Um, I'm leery about even to going through and doing a head map, but I know I need to at least try. So the way this drive is acting, I don't even know that this would work, and if it does, it's going to take forever, and I'd almost rather just start trying to get data off of this drive as much as we can, as opposed to letting it go through and, and attempt to do this, because it may error out on this, it may go through and do it just fine, but either way right now I feel like I'm kind of wasting time and you can see here it's starting to build out the head map and this is going to take a little while to complete usually these just kind of blast through and it takes no time at all um, you know, it's three percent into it now like I said on the initial look that we took at this drive um, we can see that we had about 70 gigabytes of data on there may not even be that much maybe less than that but um, since this is a one terabyte drive, we're six percent into it. I may let this get up to about fifteen percent, and just cut off making this bitmap or this head map, and just go right into imaging it. If it gives us an issue or anything, we may come back to this. But you know, like I said, right now I kind of just want to go through and get whatever we can off of here. I know that the customer said that they need some files with the file extension DAT on them. So, I'm hoping I can go through and create a, uh, a bitmap on this, and then from there, be able to select all the sectors that contain those files. That would be ideal, and just focus on imaging those first and not really doing anything else. And sorry if this camera is moving around a bit. I tried to, I'm trying to keep it steady, but. Uh, I wasn't really planning on holding it this much. Usually I just set it up on a on a stand that I have behind me. Okay, so that's about 15%, which would be, you know, around 150 gigs of the drive or so. And as long as the data is not fragmented or anything like that, um, I'll be surprised if the uh, if everything's not contained within that first We'll go up to 20%, that first 20% of the drive. And 
this is where having the right equipment really comes into play because there's no way you'd even get this far just hooking this up to a, a computer through a USB external housing or anything like that or a USB connector or connecting it directly through the SATA connection alright that's good for there okay now I'm going to change some of the configuration how the drive handles read errors and what it does during different actually this one here I may change the whole read procedure because these get a little weird on that third pass um, gonna do my best to see if we can detect the partition that'd be really awesome if we could On some Toshiba drives, this error that comes up, some Toshiba drives after you do the uh, generate a head map, you have to power them down. Not always, but sometimes you do. You can see it's skipped a few sectors. It's trying to find the partition right now. It went back through and was able to read um, those sectors there, but it's having a tough time reading those first few. Well, getting back to what I was talking about, um, sometimes after you go through and generate the head map, you'll get this error. It just powered the drive down on its own. It's having a hard time reading that, and I may just cancel this. Mainly because, yeah, I'm just powering the drive down right now. I'm going to skip generating the, the bitmap as well. Anyway, getting back to what I was talking about with the vendor specific commands you use whenever you're going through and reading and generating a head map sometimes on some Toshiba drives it will cause some errors if you go through and don't repower it before um, you start trying to work with it after you've generated a head map uh, this one here though this particular family drives is usually not an issue I'm gonna go through and power this up one more time I've got it turned off right now. So it may take it a while, not sure. Yeah, same situation here. The drive's just taking forever. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to skip through. I may even just start reading from a different head since that's head zero that's obviously given some issues there. Um, I may go through and deactivate that head and then see if I can image any of the remaining heads and I may skip forward to about 50 million sectors into the drive and just see if it kind of cleans itself up and can start reading from there. So I'm going to pause this while this is taking forever to become ready again, and I may try to set my camera up so that it's not so shaky. Okay, the drive did become ready again. Again, this drive makes no unusual noises, no anything. Um, I'd already looked through uh, some of the... when we were having this problem initially, I had looked through some of the elements within the firmware while I still had access to that area of the drive and um, there was no issues with that either. Sometimes with Toshiba drives you can have um, some problems where it won't read the sectors correctly and you can fix that issue but that wasn't the case here. It's, this is just a physical problem with the drive. It's the media itself that's having a hard time. And I'm going to go through and just deactivate that head zero because that's where we are right now. We're on head zero, and these are the sectors it was obviously having the most problems with just initially, just those few sectors, but it may have a problem with every sector that we try to read. That's what it was doing before. I'm skipping through now to about the 50 million mark. Usually that's a, a far enough ahead into the, um, into the drive to, if there's an issue at the 
at the front end of the drive causing the problems, we're going to try to skip past that and see if it kind of cleans itself up later into the drive. Okay, you can see it's trucking along pretty good right here. That's a good speed. I'm not reading head zero right now, so I have incomplete data at this point, so I'll need to come back. But heads two, heads one, two, three, you can see that switching through. Those are really going nicely. And a lot of times you might be tempted, or at least I am sometimes, to go through, okay, I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to reactivate head zero, and I'm going to try to pick it up from there, and just, uh, you know, to try to make sure you're getting a more complete image right now. I've learned over the years with hard drives, especially when they're as iffy as this one, that if you hit a point where this drive is working the way it is right now, you just leave it alone. So now we're hitting a weird spot. Because it slowed way down. And we know that it's not the head. Because this is head 3. It's been reading head 3, no problems. This is an issue with the platter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip forward some more. We read about 7.5 million sectors then. I'm going to skip forward to 65 million. Let's see if we get into a clean spot again. Basically with the deep spar imager, when it hits an area that it can't read within about, well, the way this is set up right now, within 300 milliseconds, it will skip 120 sectors. So now we're in a good spot again. And again, there's a head three. Perfect. So we know for a fact, we know for a fact, based on this right here, that the head swap was flawless. No issues there whatsoever. <clears throat> this is definitively a problem with the media itself. And when I say media, I mean the platters. The platters are having a... there's some damage to them. Something that's causing this problem. So now we're at head one, and it's doing the same thing. I'm going to skip through this. I'm up to 70 million sectors now. And right now what I'm trying to do is just kind of get an idea roughly of what we're up against, where the problem lies on the drive itself. So these are huge chunks of data that I'm just skipping over right now, but it really doesn't matter because we're just find, finding what areas can be read and reading them and then skipping over the ones that can't be. This is a very, um, this would be like what you would consider to be like a very rough draft of the data. We're doing a very light imaging of it right now. Because anything we pull off it right now is going to be completely useless. It'll be just fragmented files. But at least we're getting a bigger picture. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually write down, um, you know, where I've stopped and started so I get kind of a bigger overall picture of what things are looking like. And yeah, I mean I I don't want to have you folks that are watching just sit and watch the screen the whole time but in the same respect I kind of want you to have an overall idea of kind of what we deal with on some of these recoveries. Like I said, going into this, this being the third attempt on this, and this is actually the best results we've had. Um, you know, going into the third attempt on this, we weren't, you know, I wasn't really sure that it was going to be something that could be recovered, and I'm still not 100% sure it can be, even no matter how well this is looking right now, although I'm feeling a lot better about it for sure. Um, you know, but we could get into a point here where these heads just fail out again. There we are.
power hit one. I can hear it actually trying to read right now. Okay. So I'm going to stop that there. We are up to 85 million sectors. So it actually read fairly well. I'm going to skip up to 90 million. So we have 85 to 90 for sure that let me see if it picks back up and gets going again. Okay. And I'm just going to let the camera run. Um, feel free to fast forward, skip ahead if you want to. We're kind of riding this out together right now. You are seeing exactly what I'm seeing and getting the same results as I get them. So I try to do these videos later in the day, you know, a lot of times like at nighttime. And um, mainly because I'm less distracted, the phones aren't ringing off the hook and there's not a bunch of people running around here. We're getting pretty good areas of data here too. We can see also we're picking up picture files and stuff. So another another weird area there, and that's with head one again. Head one seems to have some areas of the platter that are just having a heck of a time reading. And I looked as good as I could at that platter, skip up to 110 million sectors. I looked as good as I could at that platter and um, didn't see anything obvious. Sometimes you can see in the reflections from one platter, from the platter above to the platter below that, you can see if there's any scratches that are obvious or anything like that. But a lot of times you can have damage to a platter that is on a microscopic level. You don't necessarily have to have it look like somebody dumped charcoal in your hard drive to know that the platters are bad. You can actually have a bad set of platters and there's really no obvious visible evidence of anything. So that was 98 million to 110 million. Just writing these down so I know where to go back in the areas that I skipped. And again, I haven't done anything with head zero yet, so that head may not, well, I can't see that platter surface at all right now. That's the bottom of the lower platter. But being that this drive doesn't have a whole lot of data on it from what we saw initially, um, I don't think we're going to have to go too far into this. So now we're at two that's having an issue. And that's a 116 million, a little almost 117 million. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through to 120. See if it picks back up. And again, this is just the first pass. And this is a totally different setting than what we would use on the second pass. It may actually be able to go through and read these sectors that it's skipping so much of uh, fairly easy in that configuration that it's in um, for pass number two. So you can see here where it says pass one. I think you might be able to see that. I haven't zoomed in. But um, it says pass one here. Uh, It'll run through this, and like I said, this is every sector can read just easily without having any major delays in reading or anything like that. And then from there, it will go through and do a second pass, which has a different, it's hard to get into, but I mean, it changes the way that the drive handles uh, sectors uh, that it couldn't read initially. The read timeout is set higher, 
Um, also, the, the mode that it uses when it reads the sector is, is different as well. I mean, yeah, I cannot be... This drive will not function any faster than this. That's probably at optimal speed, even as a, if, even if it was brand new with the, with the original set of heads. So I'm really happy with the, the way that the drive is reading the sectors that it can read. It's just the sectors that it's having an issue with that gives me pause for concern. And, you know, I am just not about to stop it and activate that head zero, taking the chance that maybe there's an issue with that platter and then trying to go back and pick up from here and for some reason it doesn't. You know, you don't want to... You don't want to stop it unless you absolutely have to, like we've been having to, to, to do so far. But you certainly don't want to stop it and force it to read from a head that may event, eventually fail or you know, cause it to where the drive just doesn't respond at all after that. It's about being... A lot of this business, I think, is, a, is about being patient, and it's about um, wanting to put the effort in, you know. I think that's a big, big part of it, too. You know, in this business, me personally, working on these, a lot of these, I mean, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm personally invested in this person's data right now. I mean, I want this to be recoverable for them. I have no idea what it is or what it's for, but I kind of put myself in the same situation so I can, you know, in the same mindset of, you know, wow, what if this was me and everything I had was hinging on this and it was just absolutely critical that I got this back. So I have a lot of um, empathy for our customers because a lot of times the stories are, you know, like this where there's business files on it and, you know, the worst ones are the ones where you have family pictures and things like that. I mean, it's just brutal. So when they don't work, it's just, it takes the wind out of your sails for sure. And so, you know, going into this where we're on the third parts drive, I can guarantee you that a lot of companies would be out there and they'll put in one attempt, maybe two, but it's very few companies that are willing to put in three, four. We've done recoveries where we've made seven or eight head swaps on a single recovery over the course of weeks working on it and you won't find that very often. And I'm not saying that just to promote our company, I'm just saying that's the mindset that we have here. We kind of try to exhaust every possibility that's available to us. Okay, this has been moving along really good here. Um, We've done about 35 million sectors without having to stop. So we may have just had, hopefully, an issue at the front end of that drive where there was some scattered damage to the platter um, that was due to the initial head failure, it's hard to say. On some of these drives you can have issues where the heads fail for no apparent reason and it ends up being you know, a problem where the actual platter, the coating on the platter, the ferromagnetic coating that's very, very thin starts to break down and it gets to the point where the heads can't read properly or it'll start to kind of almost orange peel in a way and that'll knock the heads out too. I, mean, I guess I could pause this video um, I think we may be at the end of the data. No, still got some there. These sectors here, when they're blanked out like this, there's nothing being read there. There's nothing stored there. So, like I said, we're from what I could tell by the original attempt we made on this, it looked like there's about 70 to maybe 100 gigs of data on there. And we're 8% into this drive, and it's a one terabyte drive, so we're close to that point now where we should be at the end of the actual sectors that are, have anything written to them. I'm going to let this read up till 9 or 10 percent, maybe 11 percent, and if from now until then I'm not getting anything here, I'm going to pause it and then I'm going to go back. Okay. 
a little bit more data there. And that may be, it may be that there's more here than what we think, but you, know, you definitely don't want to shut it off too soon. And yeah, we're in a good area of user data now because it's starting to pull more images and had some Microsoft Office files there. I think I'm going to pause this video and just probably come back to it whenever I activate head zero. I'm going to let this image as much as I can because now that we're in a good clean area where it seems like the drive's imaging really well, I'm going to um, just follow up with this and not have it sit here and have you guys have to watch this whole thing, I guess. Oh, we just hit a bad spot again. First one in quite a while. First one in a 58 million sectors, actually. And that's on head two. So see, there's no rhyme or reason to this. We've had head one, we've had head two, we've had head three. Um, and that's how they're numbered. Zero, one, two, three, there's four heads. We've had all three of the heads that we're using right now have issues where they've run into pockets of the platter that can't be read. So we are up to 178 million. I'm going to go ahead and skip to 188 million. back up which it does and it's still pulling down you can see the data streaming here so okay I'm gonna pause this and uh, come back to it in we'll pick up probably when I go to head zero okay I think I'm about to go through and activate head zero on this and we'll see how that works we've gone for a while here where no data has been streaming and we're about a hundred gigabytes into the end of the drive so fairly certain we're at the end of the data itself I've uh, just been letting this thing run until we get up to about 11 percent now uh, once it hit 10 percent there wasn't anything more that was showing up these are all blank sectors here so I generally want to try to go through and let it go a little bit further just to double check myself and make sure we're good. And um, and so the drive's been performing fairly well. We've had a couple areas here you can see these are where we've started and stopped and went from 188 to 190 and had to stop it and then um, it went through and stopped reading again so we restarted at 195 and it's been going now for another 12 million sectors so we're at 11 percent now i don't want to go back to that point where the drive had the obvious damage to it to, to see if that head is going to read i want to go through and see if it does it from this point if it can read anything from this far into the drive if it can then we'll start working our way backwards So now when we start imaging, it should hit head zero and start imaging that as well. We're on head two right now. I don't know if you can see that. So head two, head three, head zero. Head zero is working fine. Nothing wrong with head zero. So that is absolutely without a doubt a good set of heads that are in there right now. All the heads are reading flawlessly. Sometimes you get a little worried that okay did something happen in the head swap that you don't realize that happened and you know it's just it's a little nerve-wracking. Even though when you've been doing this long enough that you know you've done everything you can um, and you've done what you normally would do when it's always worked you know there's no reason why you shouldn't still though you wonder if the heads die right away or they don't work respond water right away is it something that that you did is it something I did you know on that is it something that somebody else here did that it doesn't take much these drives are so fragile so I'm gonna start at 190 million sectors I'm gonna start working my way back and what that's gonna do 
if this, and I have it set on pass 2 right now. And let me just, let me just show you real quick what that means. Let me get this started. Okay. This is the secondary pass, pass 2, these are the settings for it. It's going to pick up everything that hasn't been processed yet. It's going to pick up anything that had any UNC errors, any read timeout errors. The uh, read timeout errors are the ones that are the yellow blocks there, the sectors that were skipped. The timeout, instead of being 300 milliseconds right now, is at 1,000 milliseconds. We don't skip any blocks if it can't read a sector this time. And we make sure the drive uses its uh, internal read-read tries that the firmware has, the commands that it uses and we put it into PIO mode. So it's a little different and it makes the drive work a little harder. And I think what I may do is actually make this go... Uh, I'm just going to keep it like it is. I'm just not going to second guess myself. I need to just leave this drive alone and I need to let it image the way it needs to image. Uh, there I was going to go through and think about maybe swapping it around to where instead of reading from the back working forward to make it work from the forward, make it work going from forward to the back of the drive. But, because when you're working backwards it seems to run a little, well it does run quite a bit slower. But working backwards also, um, usually re results in having more of the sectors that were unread read again and that's what we're in here for we want to try to get as much data as we can off this so right now I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna let it go and come back now that we know head zero is working fine we're gonna come back later and uh, and see if we're able to clean this data up okay just uh, following up again with case 760421 um, just kind of spending some time focusing on the front end of this drive. If you'll remember in, earlier we skipped about 40, 50 million sectors. So right now I'm trying to go through and um, work a little bit of that front end of the drive as well and uh, to try to get some of that that we skipped initially and hopefully to give us a more complete uh, recovery. So far I'm still really happy with the results I'm getting off of this. It's just going to take us uh, some time. And you can see I started at 2,400,000, went up to about 2,850, and then had to stop. And now I started at 350, and I'm getting ready to have to stop. So I'm not getting too much at a time, but I am getting a little bit, little chunks here and there. And there's not enough of the uh, of the drive working to be able to go through and create a good bitmap. So I'm kind of just having to go through and just do these little chunks, and then once I've tightened it up a bit, I can go back and let the thing run a full second pass and see what it can get out of these sectors and these sections that I'm skipping. Yeah, you can see this whole front end of this drive here. Every time I start it goes a little bit and then has to run into issues and then it runs into problems where it can't read anymore. So, so I was at 5 million sectors, I'm skipping ahead to 6 million. And um, we'll see what it what it does here. And like I mentioned before, it's just a matter of being patient and putting the effort into this. So, you know, it's obviously an issue with the platter because there's head zero, one, two, three, all four heads read perfectly in that section right there, still reading perfectly. It just hits areas of that platter that are given a problem. And I think the reason why I went through those first couple sets of heads, I was too focused on the front end of the drive, and I think it was hitting those bad spots and spending too much time on them in killing those heads that I installed. So now I'm just trying to 
be easy on these these heads that I'm using right now and get as much as I can off of it and uh, so we will let this keep going. I'd had it doing a second pass for a while and it was taking forever and I knew that I needed to clean up the front end of this drive pretty good so that was why I thought well I need to get that part of it done that first 50 million sectors I need to get them red as much as I can and then I can come back and uh, and do a second pass through there but I definitely if we'd lose these heads with such a huge chunk gone in the beginning it would be tough to get anything that was decent anyway so this is our workload here for a while just going through and letting this drive do its thing and uh, kind of babysitting it so we will pick this up uh, later as we have something to update and as things change in in this it's probably going to take a couple few days to go through and and get anything to where we can start looking at the data so but I just wanted to give an update to show you kind of where we are at this point okay just going to go ahead and do a quick follow-up here with case 760421 um, still progressing we're actually uh, working backwards again we've done I think we may have a few couple few thousand sectors that haven't been imaged yet out of all four heads on the uh, the back end of that drive um, as you know we went down to about 11 percent we went about 11 percent into the drive uh, and we did that again with all four heads active and now we are working backwards on the second pass still um, it's been going for a few days now um, and we are now just cleaning up the areas that we skipped on those first initial passes um, we had some pockets within that drive that we just skipped entirely and so we're hitting those again and it's going along fairly well and it may still be a little while before we have everything done but we're back down now to about four percent in and we are at sector eighty eight million four hundred thousand roughly and this is just like I said a pocket of it that uh, that we had to miss you can see there the yellow is areas that we skipped initially probably a, a pocket of um, of the drive that we couldn't do anything with so we just skipped it and that's why we had that big open area that it was just imaging so now it's gotten past that. Okay moving on now with uh, case 760421 um, just cleaning up some of the last few sectors that uh, that we had to skip over initially um, it's been a quite a few days we've just been babysitting this drive and now we are really focusing in on the last 50 million sectors or so that we skipped initially I started trying to do some of those um, here a couple days ago a few days back when we were in the early part of it but uh, I kind of left that alone and we're just now getting back into them um, now it's at sector 45 million nine hundred something thousand so um, it shouldn't be too much longer I think that it'll be done uh, just because of the fact that um, we did hit some of these areas already I did try to at least knock out some of the big chunks of of that first 50 million sectors that we skipped over so things have been progressing the front of the the, the back end of the drive there from about 11 percent um, working forward or two percent right now so that nine percent of the drive there is just about completely imaged with all four heads um, it seemed to be pretty clean there may be some little pockets here and there of some sectors that couldn't be read but right now nothing that would have a major impact on the overall data itself so feeling really good about it and we're just gonna keep letting it run and hopefully here in the next maybe today but it'll most likely be tomorrow uh, we will have this finalized and ready to hopefully complete the recovery so this has been one of those really odd you know jobs that we get in that either works right away or it doesn't so we're gonna let this finish up and hopefully have a good update here soon
Okay, now what we've done is we've taken the clone of uh, K760421, uh, what we've been working with on our Deep Spar Imager, and we have it on another system right now, and we are running a very low level scan of that uh, cloned copy to see what we can pull off there. In the meantime, I thought it might be a good idea to go through and use PC3000 to see if maybe there's a chance that we can recognize the partitions and scan the MFT and at that point be able to select just the directories that contain the specific data that our customer is needing. Uh, the likelihood of that happening based on what I've seen so far with Strive uh, seems fairly slim to me. I don't know that we're going to be able to read anything more here than we could read in our deep spar imager. Um, you know, we could have done something similar with our DDI machine uh, by going through and scanning the bitmap, and which would give us a layout of the data on the drive and be able to select the sectors that contain the data that the customer needs. But given that so much of the front end of the drive was damaged, um, it just was not possible to generate that. It couldn't even recognize a partition. So um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead. I think it's still worth a try to do this. And I think it's, you know, I have nothing else to do right now as far as this case is concerned um, while that other drive is scanning. And everything that we have right now uh, that's being worked on is being handled by other people. So I have some free time to, to mess with this and I think that this is a good opportunity to go through and, and do this and see what it does. So right now I'm going to go up and I'm going to apply power to this drive. You'll see down here it shows that it's busy and I would imagine if this is anything which it shouldn't be any different but if it's just like it was in our DDI machine it should take it a while before it even shows that it's ready. And given what I learned by um, messing with this drive um, so far, I would say that uh, even once it becomes ready, once these two lights here light up, uh, it's going to be best to let that drive sit for probably another three to five minutes before we actually start trying to gain access and utilize it. So I'm going to let this go and uh, skip the video ahead until it becomes ready and after I've let it sit for a little bit. Okay, the drive has become ready. You can see down here and we'll see if it detects. And it does, so that's a good sign. We'll go ahead and run the utility for Toshiba drives. It detected the family, so that's another good sign. Up here, model number, serial number, uh, capacity is all detected. And it's not really surprising because, like I said, we were able to gain access with it um, in uh, our Deep Spar Imager as well. So what I'm going to do at this point is go into Data Extractor, which is a uh, utility that's an, kind of an add-on PC3000. I'm going to create a task for this case. So now what we can do is we can um, go up here to the Explorer. We could go through and generate a head map for it. I'm not even going to waste the time doing that right now. Um, I already know that the heads are good. And yes, I know that there's going to be areas that aren't readable. But if we can't read the front end of this drive and see the partitions and be able to scan the MFT, it's really not going to matter. So. Just go into the Explorer, check this, 
and let me pull the map up here. These are essentially the sectors, uh, the sector map for the drive. You can already see sector zero, it couldn't read, it's red. And I'm having a feeling that we're going to have, yeah, there's another readable sector just like we were having in the deep spar imager. I have a feeling we're going to run into the same issues here that we had. In fact, it just killed the drive. So the drive shut down. It should restart though. Maybe it won't. It's showing it's busy down here. I'm going to power it off and turn it back on. It had reset itself, but it still was not. Displaying properly, yeah, yeah. It's not seeing the partition either. I'm not even going to waste my time with this. I don't want to do anything to further damage um, these heads in case we might need them uh, for any more uh, imaging and cloning that we might need to do on our deep spar machine. I know already that this is not going to work on here, um, but it was worth a shot. I think a lot of times with uh, PC3000 when you have heads that are in a severely degraded state like this, there's physical damage to the drive itself. Um, it, we've just seen time and time again, and it could be a complete coincidence because there's really nothing wrong with PC3000 as a whole, it's wonderful, 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 amazing product. Um, but for some reason with drives that are just a little flaky or severely degraded, um, we just don't get good results out of it you know, compared to like our DDI machine. Um, but, you know, when this is working and you've just put a set of heads in and the drives are responding well, this is absolutely, without a doubt, one of the ideal solutions to use. Uh, but when you have a drive where the, the heads are right on the verge of failing or you got some platter damage, um, to me, I just, I don't have as, personally, I don't have as good a luck or feel as comfortable utilizing PC3000 uh, as I do our deep spar machine, mainly because it seems like we run into issues where um, we've actually had heads that have failed uh, when we've had them run under PC3000, but we've put another set of heads in and under deep spar, we've been able to get a lot more data off of them. So there's just little nuances, little differences, and it just goes to show you that there is no one solution that works for everything. So um, what works um, for PC3000 may not work you know, on our DDI machine, which has been the case many times as well. What works on DDI doesn't necessarily work so well on PC3000. That's why having the proper tools and having a variety of them can really bode well for you and the customers um, as far as having the, the best chance to recover their data. So at this point, uh, we are going to be done with trying to use PC3000 on this. Um, and we're going to focus strictly on the, uh, the clone of the drive that we have so far. And once that scan is completed and we've rebuilt the file structure, we'll see what that takes a look like, what that looks like. And uh, we will update you and, and show you as well. Okay, this is the final update on case 760421. Um, as you know, whenever I was talking about, or I had it connected to PC3000, I said we had the cloned copy of that drive uh, scanning, and we had cloned everything but about 5 million sectors, and even out of that 5 million sectors, we'd had quite a few of that uh, also uh, cloned. But roughly that first 5 million sectors within the drive um, were in pretty bad shape. And we had uh, right around 190 to 200 million sectors total that were uh, making up the data that was contained in that partition. So we had around 97% of that partition that scanned without any errors. So um, what that resulted in was uh, once we had a really low level scan of that partition done, uh, the file structure was able to be rebuilt pretty much intact. We had very few orphaned files which are generally uh, found in cases where there's a lot of uh, 
file system damage and unreadable sectors we had so you know that wasn't too bad and we've gone through already and verified with the customer um, sending them a file list of uh, what was in the user profile um, the files that they were needing uh, making sure that what we had was in fact uh, the data that they were needing uh, within those directories I'm not going to show you obviously the customer's personal data because you know the privacy issues and things but um, just to give you an idea of how the folders and subfolders looked I mean you know going through the Windows directory here you can pretty much see that uh, everything was intact uh, this is kind of across the board what we saw throughout all of the drive um, folders looking good files looking good so in all based on what we were looking at at the beginning of this recovery which was um, a very bleak outlook in fact that was one of the primary focuses on this video was to show you what it's like whenever you know we have a drive that we've worked on over and over and over again uh, for days at a time going through multiple sets of heads and still not recoverable uh, we were thinking that that was the path we were going to go down with this recovery and luckily for the customer and you know thankfully for us that wasn't the case we had a very positive outcome on it so I'm super stoked on that uh, and it just goes to show you that you know a lot of times it's just about perseverance with these recoveries and knowing what to do and when to do it um, when it comes down to um, getting the data off and also having the tools necessary to do it properly and uh, having a variety of those tools so that you can have different solutions to try so anyway uh, that pretty much wraps up this case I know this has been a tremendously long video with a lot of non-stop droning on by myself um, but you know, I appreciate you watching I appreciate the, um, the folks out there that subscribed our channel and that give us calls and you know ask us you know what it is we do and how we you know discussing their situations with them and by all means if you have a, a drive that you need data recovered from you know please do not hesitate to give us a call at 1-800-717-8974 uh, you can also uh, get a lot of information on our website at acsdata.com you can see the, the link for it here on the video and also in the description below um, you know we'd be happy to help you with any questions you might have we don't charge any evaluation fees on any type of media it doesn't matter what it is whether it's a hard drive it doesn't matter if it's a, a 22 drive RAID 6 array there's absolutely no charge for us to look at any type of storage device whatsoever um, and also in most cases that we work on there's no charge if the data is not recoverable for some reason so uh, we'd be happy to, to to help you in however much you know however we can um, and we'd be happy to discuss your situation with you and be sure to subscribe be sure to check out some of our other videos and stay tuned for some more videos that we have uh, coming up soon and again visit our website at acsdata.com and uh, Give us a call at 1-800-717-8974 if you ever need to. Thanks for watching.